Amazing. Um, hi, how are you, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good, really good. Good. How are good. you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, really, really enjoyed this film. Um, lots, lots to oh, think thanks. about and talk so, about. Um, it's a really good, fun project. Um, and it must have been a daunting project because it's all I mostly improv. Um, so uh, <clears throat> what made you say yes to such a daring and possibly scary project? Um, well, it sort of came out of the, you know, it was in the middle of COVID. We were meant to shoot it in uh, the just before the first COVID Christmas. And then Jamie got Corona. So mm -hmm. it was pushed till later. And I hadn't worked at all during that whole time. My wife was luckily uh, enough able to work. And I really wanted to do something that wouldn't send me away from home for an unknown period of time, which was sort of what could happen at that stage. So this film was 10 days in quarantine and then six days shooting. So I thought, well, what's the worst that could happen? I kind of overlooked the fact that it was um, improvised and it only really dawned on me a few weeks beforehand. And I had a, I got the fear so bad. My wife was going, what are, you, what are you so worried about? I was like, it's going to be like reality TV. I'm going to have to use myself. She was like, but you love reality TV. I like watching it, but I don't. Uh, but I, I never, you know, that's one of the reasons I enjoy watching it because I'm fascinated that people can be that. You know, can can lay it, let it all out in front of the cat, all their own private details and things. As an actor, I like to hide behind, um, you know, beards and costumes, and <laughs> someone else's lines. Well, what what kind of reality TV sort of inspired uh, your character? Did you did you draw anything from anyone? Yeah, I took him a little bit, sort of uh, from some of the. Um, I can't believe I'm telling you this. For a mixture of people, you know, I sort of thought this this sort of guy is sort of lazy. He's got everything. He's got a gorgeous young girlfriend who's who adores him. It's fantastic, but it's just not enough, you know. I think he can't help but want everyone to fall in love with him, including his old ex-wife. So I suppose that was sort of a little bit inspired by the, some of the Made in Chelsea people, I suppose, these guys who just cannot help but mess up their relationships you know I, i've got i've gone off made in chelsea i'm now deep into real, real housewives territory it's amazing just love it. i don't want to watch um you know netflix shows and amazon shows it's like a busman's holiday i'm just there going i can't believe he got that part i'd rather <laughs> i'm with you there my favorite's below deck at the moment like oh, it's just well. it's ca it. chaos <laughs> it's amazing um so how much faith does um jamie put in you to develop the character does he give you any guidance at the beginning um is he like this is who he is or is he like you develop him as you, in your own way i think he partly cast the people who he cast because they were somewhere close to the people that he wanted us that, that mm. we already were i realized when i was in because we shot the film in six days 10 days in quarantine i was with jamie which is the we didn't really know each other before that. So I realized that a lot of the character was also based on, on loosely based on things that had happened to him and the, and some of the sort of the, the phobias and idiosyncrasies of, uh, of Idris were very much his. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and what I find, I just, the realism of, I really believe that you and Haley were in this decade long estranged relationship so how fun was oh, it great. developing that relationship because it just feels like you guys were exes at some point well we didn't we developed it as we were doing it we mm. met the night before we'd spoken briefly very briefly on the telephone where she asked am I really going to do this you know because she wasn't sure whether to do it or not and I said come on let's just go for it we've got nothing to lose and then we met and then I mean, we had a lot of, we were, we sort of made it up as we went went along with some guidance from Jamie, but the camera was rolling for, you know, six or seven hours a day. So there's a lot that 
you know, of, of us finding our feet that, that that wasn't there. But we just we just did it on the hoof. <laughs> I really enjoy it. It I shows really... how good she is. Yeah. yeah, and you're both really good together. I really like how the minute she comes back into his life, there's an immediate chaos that she brings out in him. Yes. So yeah, I think that's. I don't. Well, I don't know. I think you know I, that I recognise from 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 my own life, I suppose, from my own experiences. And I think there are people. You know, we know that from our friends, if not from ourselves, that there are certain chemistries that are just bad for one another. You know um and i think that's but at the same time you feel very much it feels very much alive or or real or when when emotions are are fraught it can feel more passionate even if it's more dis destructive actually absolutely and it sort of makes sense that their night even though it starts out a lot of fun and they're having a lot of fun it sort of makes sense that it would just turn take a darker yes. turn in my experience, whenever you throw alcohol into the mix, <laughs> things can quite easily go downhill. I, I love it because because knowing it's improv, were there any moments, like getting dressed as the ghosts, right? Were, was that planned? Did you know that you were going to do it or was that just someone took that lead and then you just all went for it? No, I think I think that might have been in what Jamie calls the, the script then, but, exa but exactly with the makeup and things and the bed sheets and then getting in the bath and all of that stuff. You know, I can't remember now whether that was who's, who's, who, whose idea it, it was. It all becomes a bit like a jam when you're in a band, you know, the bass player starts with something and then everyone starts doing their own thing. And then you never, you know, you never really know where it started. Absolutely, which makes like makes it feel more like a drunken <laughs> escapade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, transversely, what I like about um Marissa's character Louise is that she may be younger, but she feels much more grounded than than these two adults who are Abs older than her. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. She's she's really, you know, she's much more sound. Than, than they are it's, it's quite funny the difference between a 23 year old and you know the disaster of, <laughs> of the late 30s early 40s for me <laughs> it really works well um and the other thing the, the the song that you guys sing together about not getting married again was that also improv that was that was totally improvised on the moment. He had asked me to write another song, which is then used at the end of the film, which Marika Hackman, who plays the sort of super fan who comes at the end, which was sort of based on a scene in Imagine, the John Lennon documentary. Um, uh, she finished then an idea that I had and finished it much more beautifully than I would. But the other song, we, we did it in the middle of a two hour long take. And then at the end of it, Jamie said, oh, that was great. We've got to do it again now on, on Haley or on you and do the song again. And we both looked at him and said, well, we don't, I don't, we don't really remember the song. So we had to go, go in the other room and the sound guy played us back what we'd, what we'd done. Because we carried on for about 45 minutes after that and he, he was completely sort of, you know, you've no idea what, what what you've just done amazing it's a catchy song it's a good, it's a good tune though <laughs> it's a good tune it was in my head for a while after watching the film never yeah. been married before but you know it was like around yeah. my flat and season. you never now you never will yeah. no, I yeah. <laughs> um uh final question just a just a bit of a frivolous question but i really liked your opening scene where it's just you on the deck going crazy um and i was wondering if you were a dj what banger would you put on to get everyone on the dance floor to get everyone dancing oh to those moves? <laughs> it is a terror. I, I can't even, I, I can't even think of anything now. The Macarena, maybe that's always, uh, <laughs> that always gets them going. Always gets it? them going. That's great. Oh, something from the seventies, probably, I guess those were great floor fillers. That's showing my age <laughs> before my time. <laughs> 
I mean, they they do work. The seventies bangers, they Tiger Feet, yeah. you know, Bore and Blitz. That's a great. Oh yeah, I love Bore and Blitz. I just said that again recently on German radio. It's not the sort of thing you play on probably. But I realized I even preferred the one that um, was in Wayne's World. Yes, yes, that the Cassandra plays. Cassandra plays. It's a. I was listening to other, and I thought, man, Cassandra's was even better than this. It was that was a banger. That was, yeah. So good. Yeah. Cassandra's version of Born Blitz is a great answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go with that. Cut the first part that I said. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. You've been an absolute darling. Um, and this film is really great. So I really hope um oh, thanks. people go and Appreciate see it, it and enjoy it. And have a lovely day. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Sarah. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!